What's up, Big Tuna? There you go. That's good. Check this out. That's a Dundee right there. Yeah, I was just swimming in office references. Is it in camera? Yeah, it's on frame. Hey, hey. It's not a Dundee. I was a, awarded a Dundee. You were? From your brother. You got a Dundee for... Don't drop it. Careful. Most likely to be dropped... I don't know why you got it for. <laughs> I got it because, well, for one, I'm the host of the show, Comic Tom. I grew up in the back of a comic book store, and my dad got me into comic books when I was young, and now I make content about it. And I'm sitting here with my homies. Yeah, man. I'm the Golden Age Guru. Anything that's uh, old and gold, I'm your go-to. I'll give old you any information I can. That's good. I like that. Old and gold. I'm I'm Ryan. I'm Fire Guy Ryan. I am also here. That's right. I talk about comics. You read comics, man. I do. You may read more comics than I do, man. Not old ones, though. Not yet. No offense. We're going to talk about <laughs> We're old gonna comics. We're going to do it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so offended right now. <laughs> it's okay. We'll get you there, Ryan. All right. Well, first things first. You know, thank you so much to the community. Last week's podcast was a major success. It's probably the most watched video on this channel for as long as it was in our entire portfolio. It's amazing. So maybe every video we make should be longer than the one before it. Maybe Ooh. that's the key. We need to just like, the better. get to like Joe Rogan status and do like a six hour long podcast. That's right. No, nah, I don't think the community wants that. Nah. <laughs> but what the community should want is actually the first sponsor of the show. Our first sponsor is going to be is Key Collector, which is a great app that you can find on your phone. And if you sign up, it has some amazing features that it's going to unlock. One of them, future keys, which we're going to get into shortly. That's right. Key Collector Comics. If you use code TOM101, you can go to the description, download it on Android or iTunes. It's the best app on the market. It's going to enhance your comic book collecting. And let's chat about future keys because this is a category that gets unlocked when you pay for the full service, which is only two bucks a month. Yeah, this future keys um, icon that you can find in the app, it's really one of the most useful tools for jumping ahead of everybody else to know what to pre-order so you have that book waiting for you at the store when that time comes we talked last week how a lot of people miss out on hot books because most of the time a you're just not aware that it's going to be that hot at the time so you just assume you're going to pick it up at the store this is something like your own personal preview guide that's been filtered. It's a category filled with key comic books based off of the next 90 days of solicitations, press releases, and industry insider tips. So just imagine, right, you missed out on Immortal Hulk early, okay? Now imagine if you can get notified three months in advance, this book is going to be hot. Are you not going to take the steps necessary so that you can get that book you want? Knowing about number ones in advance is always a good thing. Or even twos or threes or 15 yep. or six, some random issue number. You, you Like, the work is being done for you. All you have to do is scroll. Let's look at, like, what's going on in November. Let's just, like, go way out there. Yeah, if you go all the way out to November, you have Captain Marvel 12. All right? This is the first appearance of dark Captain Marvel. I mean, this is a sweet-looking cover, by the way. Okay? She's in a completely different all-black outfit. This awesome just, like, red star on the face. And then you can only assume that number 11 is going to have a cameo. So you might as well pick up 11 as well, or at least put it aside, look at it, and see if it's in there. I'm and also like specking on Batman and Superman issue number four. That whole Batman who laughs, I was a little worried about this, but Ryan, he showed me that Shazam reveal. Oh, I was worried about the comic too, but then I didn't, you know, I read it and it's about uh, Batman who laughs. It's not just Batman, Superman. So like the whole Batman who laughs, uh, infecting heroes plot line seems to be kind of coming to fruition here. A couple of issues down the line in issue four of this run. What's going on in that issue? All right. So I'm going to go through the app specifically so we can give it verbatim because there's a lot going on in this issue. So it's as simple as this. I get my phone. I unlock it with my secret passcode. One, two, three, four. <laughs> Boo, do, do. There's the app. Out loud. Yeah. And here's the app. Perfect. And I scroll, scroll, scroll. And I go three months. Look, I'm not even looking at my phone. I just know the bottom is three months later. And that's like November. So here we go. Superman, Batman, right? Number four. Wow. There it is. There it First is. full appearance of the Secret Six. Heroes infected by the Batman who laughs toxin. Jim Gordon. Ooh. Some excited. of those have already yeah. happened just in issue one, by the way. So it's like the team. The first this is exciting. Team. I'm excited anyway. I'm getting that for sure. I'm adding that to my pull list. Download Key Collector Comics. Use that code TOM101. Support the show, but also help yourself get some really dope comics ahead of time. And don't be that person who shows up at the shop complaining that you don't get that one hot book of the day. Don't you be Jim Lee. I was going to say. Don't be <laughs> Jim Lee. <laughs> All right. We got a show filled with a lot of fun stuff. We're talking about comic book 
like rumors. We're talking about like awesome crossover events that are happening. Rob Liefeld was hit by a car back in 2000 that I didn't hear about this story. It's really, really crazy. Um, we have like Hulk v. Wolverine talk and the ending of binge watching shows as we know it is upon us. Let's get into the show. Ryan. Yes, sir. Powers of X, House of X. Yep. Oh my gosh. Did they just connect it to Absolute Carnage? So this comic just came out a few days ago. So spoiler warning. I'm going to read a little bit of Powers of X issue number four. Let me uh, just break it down a little a little bit for you. This storyline is about the island of Krakoa. And there's a sequence in Powers of X number four where the mutant Cypher, his name is Doug, which is not as cool of a name. He has like the power of language. So he's able to talk to Krakoa. Which, uh, side note, the speech bubbles that Krakoa uses are definitely the same text as Null. Ooh. Yeah, which is not as so much of a side note as like a preview, I guess. So he talks to Krakoa, and Krakoa tells Doug that uh, in, in the past, in the way, way past, Krakoa used to be one big island. And at a certain point, there was a mysterious being who used a twilight sword to chop this island in half, and it became Krakoa and Arako. It's like a like an anagram. It's using the same letters, but it spells Arako instead of Krakoa. So now there are two of these islands, and the speculation is that this being who split the island with this twilight sword is Null. I love this, man. The symbiote god. It's crazy, man. Null is the precursor to all of marvel he's popping up all over the place lately he was there in the void he was there in awakened by the celestials like this is a character that is gaining ground because the comics are so good and i think it's worth pointing that out here that you don't have a movie you don't have a cartoon or anything like that you just have good writing that's causing a character to pop Comics still got it. This is what drives people to comics and keeps them and retains them. No nonsense, good storytelling, good artwork, just great, great stuff that we should all really enjoy. And I want to point out, too, it's not just Hickman. It's Donny Cates as well. And Donny Cates is new on the scene. Like, I know we give him a lot of credit. We say his name a lot on the camera, but it's for good reason. He's a newer writer. So it's not just because we have someone who's OG, got a huge track record for draw, for writing great books. We have a new writer and an old writer who are killing it. I'm really intrigued by Null. He's giving me Thanos vibes. He's showing up all over the place in a bunch of different comics, and there's a lot of little nuggets about his backstory sprinkled around everywhere. It kind of feels like they're building to something. Oh, but what are they building to? Not just absolute carnage, right? Like, that doesn't feel big enough well we have a new x-men coming like you know they're revamping all of x-men as we know it so i don't know we got to pay attention i'm paying attention and across the country people are going to their comic book stores and they're picking up this book and man it's got me pumped yeah it's a good one all right let's move on to our next section because we got tank girl we have a giveaway here i have a volume one of of the collection of tank girl why are we talking about tank girl right now we're discussing tank girl because we might be seeing tank girl on the screen again yeah and that's a, i think that movie came out in like 95 yeah i think it's you're a right good one too i like it i will agree to disagree <laughs> <laughs> as politely as possible but margot robbie also harley quinn um her production company lucky chap entertainment has acquired the rights to make this tank girl movie which she'll probably star in, because I can see her playing that character. I mean, I think we can all see that. Absolutely. I can, now that I'm looking at the comic. Tank Girl is a character that, at the end of the 80s, was like depicted as like the coolest new female lead in comic books, especially from an independent comic book. And to this day, this is a series that is respected, and I think of like past conventions that I attended, helping out at booths and stuff, I know, right? Isn't that dope? I can see it. Right? That's her. I can it see looks, it. She's going to do it. So at conventions, 
uh, one of the things that I remember most is, all right, you got to get those books that are going to go up on the wall, but then you also need those books in the front that are a little bit more affordable, kind of like at a grocery store. You know, you put the the stuff that you're trying to sell at the end of the aisle. The money beats. The money beats, exactly. Yeah. So Tank Girl is a money beat. You put your Spider-Man 1 by McFarlane, you get those out in the front. You also put your Tank Girl out front. Those are going to always sell, and they do. And I remember being at Rose City helping out Hills of Comics, shout out John, and same thing. We put out like 15 copies, all sold out. And this is prior to all this. Tank Girl is loved by a lot of people. It's a very specific style of book and type of readership for it. So it's not very mainstream. So that's probably why the movie also struggled because it's out there. It's different, man. It is different. I, I mean, if they can update this in some fashion where it's more appealing to the masses then um, I can see possibly some success for it, but like it, it is, it's uh, it's out there, guys. I was gonna say that might be the problem. Like you either your only options are to update it and try to make it appeal to more people, or make it weird and hope it appeals enough to a specific subset of people to kind of be successful. Post-apocalyptic Australia, it's very Mad Max like. Yeah, you know, I got the uh, steampunk style genre. This is Jamie Hewlett. Do you know who this is? I don't know who J- Jamie Hewlett is other than the Tank Girl artist. He is the artist who co-created the Gorillas, the animation band. You know, the Gorillas, you know, it happens, feeling glad, that whole song and everything. That's a great brand. And they perform in front of screens. And those screens are filled with animation, and it's all his art. I like Plastic Beach. Right? <laughs> I don't really like Gorillas, but I like Plastic Beach. They're really good, man. Yeah. Huge fan base. I'm yes. excited. But here's the one problem. Neither Jamie nor Martin, the creators of Tank Girl, knew about this even happening. Red flag. Red flag. I don't look at it as a red flag. You don't? This book is way too out there, I think, for them for this to be a mainstream film. Like if they had input on the first one and the first one didn't do that great, I have no faith that they're gonna have any more ability to do another one. Um, I think Margot Robbie's production company puts out good movies. I think they know what they're doing. And with or without them, I think they'll put out probably an appropriate mass movie that is going to be more appealing. And I don't think they need them. They have the character. They have the actress who I think can do a good job. Maybe they'll ask for some thoughts on it, sure. But, like, man, I don't think it makes a freaking difference with this book, with this movie specifically because if it doesn't follow the book i think it's better off i think it just has to be loosely interpreted personally i think that the fans of tank girl need the input from the creators even their endorsement would go a long way that could be the case for sure i mean if you're going to look at it more like they want the stamp of approval just because they're going to feel better that it was more authenticated by the creators then yes i absolutely get that what do you think comic fan i want to hear your thoughts on this i want to know if you think that the creators of these independent comics need to have some type of input in these movie franchises even if it's just a little bit you know we saw hellboy get miniola involved and that apparently that really didn't help so maybe i'm wrong let us know Also, want to let you know about our mystery mail call. This is our comic book subscription service where we send you comic books every month. It helps fund the show and it helps get you comic books every month at your door. The link's in the bio, comictom101.com. And we are in our last day of sign up because this gets dropped on Sunday, the 15th. It's the cutoff day. So if you want to join the community, we are selling out this month. And it's probably because of the dope exclusive we got. Yeah, we got that Gut Ghost variant. That's right. That thing is beautiful. And this is like the first month that we're like actually maybe not going to have enough mail calls for people. <laughs> so like, That's crazy. Yeah. I, I did not expect this kind of gargantuan growth after an announcement for an exclusive. That's right. And we're going to be doing another exclusive next month. And we're going to keep that going. So definitely want to join the community ASAP. All right. Let's jump into some Riri Williams spec news rumors right. right i don't i don't know if it's gonna happen but what do you think ryan they're talking about maybe doing a riri williams iron heart maybe disney plus series eventually down the line at some point and the rumor is that it's going to have an ai tony stark just like the comic book not just tony stark but the rumor is that robert downey jr 
is going to play this AI Tony Stark. Okay, so this has books spiking. We're seeing people starting to put money into the first appearance of Riri Williams. We got people looking at the first appearance of Tony Stark as an AI. I don't even want to go over the prices because I really don't think that this is going to happen. But I could be wrong. Now, I didn't think She-Hulk would happen, so I could be wrong. But oh, I just really don't see this happening. I mean... Don't you think that it would take away from his death from Endgame if they did anything with Robert Downey again? Yes. Yeah, I think so. That was a really powerful scene, and um, I get what you're saying about taking it away because, or taking away from it. Uh, so yeah, I, I don't know if that would be the best decision. I mean, maybe they tried for a moment, like adapting a voice, and she's like, "Yeah, no, don't want that one." And, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah. Wasn't he a hologram at the end of Endgame? Right with the "Love You 3000 scene at the cabin. Yeah, I and guess like he did it already, kind of. Yeah, like don't don't mess with the legacy. Don't don't bring it back. It's way too soon. I don't know when that show would come out, but like we've we've moved past it. I feel like it might even be too soon for uh, Riri Williams, an Ironheart character. Like that might even need to wait a while. I think for the the legacy effect to kind of kick in. I don't really see this happening. It's hard for me to imagine them putting a suit of armor on a teenager, you know, in that way, even for a Disney Plus show. They would have to age her up pretty, pretty significantly, I think, to make it okay for for her to be doing something that dangerous. With no connection at all in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, because like it would make more sense to have Peter Parker do something. That's another thing, too. They just did the Iron Man mentor thing with uh, Spider-Man Homecoming and, and, you know, the fallout from that with Far From Home and now... To just kind of have Robert Downey Jr. again be a, a mentor again to a younger hero again, using an iron suit again to kind of find their feet and, and become a superhero. It just feels like more of the same. So maybe Marvel will do it because they like to do that. I may be biased because I want to see Kang, but let's just bring Iron Lad in. That would be cooler. I think Young Avengers would be a better route to go than, than Iron Heart. All right. Wait, that's just rumors, though. And we have more rumors to discuss on the show, and we'll get to that. But before we do, we need to talk about some like mainstream press. The Russia thing? The Russia thing. The Russia thing. Ah, the Russia thing. The we Russia need, thing. We need Slav back. I know. He's on his way back. He needs to break this one down for us. I can't wait till he's back, man. Me too. We miss you, bud. The right. Russia thing. And not an election thing. No, we're not talking about that. Right? No. Now, we're talking about an uh, official of Russia who's talking about comic books and just totally just demeaned a whole community of people. Vladimir Murinsky. That was not bad. Pretty close. Pretty close, yeah. Um, so Vladimir Medinsky is a Russian culture minister, and he, for the most part, said, if you're above the age of eight years old and you're reading a comic book, you are a moron. Like That's like pretty much verbatim, you know, in the translated way that he said it. Comics are like chewing gum, as you say. This is not food. Comics should be for a child who is only learning to read up to seven or eight years old. But an adult to read comics is to admit that I'm a moron. I read comics. See, it's not just in America where individuals are being ridiculed for enjoying this medium, which, by the way, is made up largely by adults. Like, there's very little kids' comics happening. And it's kind of an expensive hobby to even be a part of. These comments blew up over there. There's a lot of people that enjoy comic books in Russia, and people got pissed real quick. And I find this pretty interesting because, one, this... It shows that it's not just in America that individuals are ridiculed for enjoying this medium. This happens on foreign in foreign countries as well. And what's super interesting is that Russia also provides money to different sectors to fund comic book sales as well. So he's kind of hurting his own his own economy a little bit here. Like you said earlier, he just might not know all of the details about this. And and yeah, it's definitely a global phenomenon to kind of talk down and you know crap on people who are into this hobby of ours last year we actually had some mainstream press around bill maher who was ridiculing the comic book industry pretty aggressively and i think he regretted it by the end of it but what did he say can we stop pretending that the writing in comic books is so good oh please every superhero movie is the same thing a person who doesn't have powers gets them has to figure out how they work and then has to find a glory thing Justice League, glory thing. Iron Man, glowy thing. Spider-Man, glory thing. Captain America, glowy thing. It's like it, that whole comment is so naive and dumbfounded and simplifies the storyline of these books. You can say that about like any movie. 
Yeah, any movie you can break down to its simplest format. You know, oh. you got an action movie for crying out loud. Uh, someone stole my, killed my dog, and now I will go get revenge. Someone or, kidnapped my daughter. I'm gonna go get revenge. Yeah, yeah. romance. You it's know? like complaining that there's protagonists and antagonists. It's like I don't know. Read a book. This movie has plot development. Yeah. Damn it! Oh, she broke my heart. I'm going to now struggle with that relationship <laughs> and carry that on through the rest of my life until I find someone special to replace her. I mean, like, well, what do you want to say? Now, look. Comic reading, I'm not saying is the highest level of reading, but we only read it because it's just fun storytelling that we can escape with characters that are just not in your day-to-day you know, life, and it's just more fantasy-based. It's just fun stuff to read. I wanted to bring up a conversation that happened. I don't know if you remember this, but this was in San Diego Comic-Con. This is a true story. We were in a lift headed to the convention center, and the driver started making fun of adults who were cosplaying she kind of like made a couple jokes like oh look at all these cosplayers it's making my my job entertaining and then she rounded it back and said what do you guys think about adults who dress up and she definitely said it with a tone is this as she was on the way to drop you off at comic-con yes didn't even think about maybe i shouldn't talk like this about clearly people who are going to this same event you would think so okay and then jeff you had a really really well thought out thing that impressed me. And I thought, oh, I got to bring that up on the show. And I'm bringing, I'm thinking about it just now. Do you remember this conversation? Yeah, I do. And so um, cosplay, I, I can appreciate cosplay. It takes a lot of time, a lot of effort. It's not easy. Like you're in a suit all day. Some people can't even handle wearing just a t-shirt and jeans. You know, you're in a hot suit. So you can see the dedication to people that people have for comic books. And I can respect that and appreciate that. And I know a lot of people look at it like, oh, it's, just people trying to get attention or photo, whatever. It's people enjoying the hobby. The community. And the community. So I related it to sports events where people are wearing, by the thousands and thousands and thousands, jerseys of their players. They're supporting their home team or they're supporting whatever team it is. Okay, They're not really Joe Montana. Okay, They're not really... You know, Dak Prescott or Ezekiel. They're not these people. I was going to say those guys, too. You know, that was the next sports man I was going to say. <laughs> Athlete sports is the word. <laughs> but yet they're there, and we don't make fun of them. We see them as somebody who supports the team. So it's the same thing. People are going out wearing a costumes. It's not like they can wear jerseys. Right. Okay, for <laughs> Wolverine jersey. I mean, just not appropriate. So this is what they do, and it's great. I support both. And that's what you said to her. You're like, ah, you don't see it any different than someone spending $100 on a jersey and wearing it proudly. And you definitely changed her mind. She was like, oh, I never really thought of it like that. And I, that's why I wanted to bring up these stories. Because, you know, we as collectors and stuff, yeah, we hear this kind of stuff all the time. I don't, you know, oh, you like comic books? Yeah, you know, screw off. I, I don't care about your opinion. However, whenever this kind of stuff happens, we need to be boisterous. We need to make sure that we shun that type of conversation Maybe enlighten some people, right? Shunning them, right? Yes. But enlighten them about the community and the culture because we can change minds. We can move mountains. Ooh, yes, we can. And we can move cars. Rob Liefeld in 2000 was hit by a car. And we got to chat about this. A couple weeks ago and last week, we've been reporting on this like conversation that's happening on Twitter, just arguments happening between Rob Liefeld and terrific comics you know, who owns the rights of young blood doesn't really matter but what happened was there was a rumor that was started that rob liefeld was accidentally hit by his own car have you ever heard this story and then, what what recently like a self-driving car like a, no, like no, a no, tesla no. thing no it was like a joke like oh it's kind of like i have not heard this like he's a like he was like an idiot or something like this guy like left his car running and he hit himself with his own car. Like how, how dumb could he be? It was like in that context. And that was a rumor that went around and Rob, it came back up again it, it, with all this like Twitter fighting happening. And he elaborated on what exactly happened and we got to get into it because it's kind of nuts. You know, there's certain moments in your life where something happens that you, you, you look back and you remember that moment when you gained appreciation for something. I can look back and remember the very day that I gain a little more respect for Rob Liefeld after this story. Right. Because the story goes, he's going to Blockbuster. Now, for those of you who are so young and you don't know what a Blockbuster is, (laughs) okay, you used to have to go into a store and actually pick out your own movie by hand. Off the wall. No digital screen, 
No crane machine grabbing it for you. Nothing like that. Okay. And you would have to, and it came in a cassette form. Right. All right. And you rented it and you had to return it in a timely fashion or you will be fined. You either, either go into the store or there was a drop box on the outside of the store, kind of like a library. And you got to make sure to rewind your movie because you would be fined as well for not winding it. But this is in 2000, so I'm assuming this is like DVD stuff. Well, like the or, early times yeah. of DVDs, yeah. but they were, VHS was still so big I, thing. I want to imagine Rob is returning a VHS in this story. Yes. It was probably a DVD, but Rob gets out of his car, leaves it running because he's trying to get it in time so he doesn't have to pay a little bit more money. We've he's, all been he's there. He's that close to the line? Like, I've got seconds to lose. Like, I've got to hurry. Get to the, <laughs> I can't even shut my car off or like lock it or anything. I know. Bad move number one, but right. it happens, right? Okay. okay. So what happens? Yeah, so his car, he just leaves his car running because he's just jumping out to go at the drop box at the front door. Well, little does he know that when he turns around, someone is about to jack his car. Yeah, that. Like they, this woman gets into his car thinking that, oh, there's a car left running. I'm going to steal I've been this. waiting my whole life for this. Like, he's clearly going from just the car to the store. He's probably like, what, 10 feet away from the car? Like if he parked right in front of the store? From this tweet, it doesn't seem like she realized he was that close. Okay, okay. Yeah, she. It, it seems like she was maybe going to assume he was going to go into the store. Okay, that makes. But sense. since he turned around so quickly, she freaked out and drove oh, no. forward into Rob, into the blockbuster, pins him up against the wall. The glass breaks. People in blockbuster freaking out. The employee of blockbuster has to jump over the hood of the car and help get him off. Because he would potentially lose his legs. The car was still running. You know, it's not like, I'm not saying it was necessarily in drive, but it was still on. And he was, like you said, pinned. So he was concerned his legs were going to break at that point. So luckily, I don't know, by miracle, just by a miracle, he survived. Yeah, someone said, thank the Lord. And he's like, yeah, there was something supernatural at play here. Because it was a big deal. I have not heard any of this before. I hadn't either. But you know what? It definitely humanizes him you know he's this huge creator and you think oh dang like that could have been it you know I mean, stephen king got hit by a car too right around that same time he did mm-hmm. i wonder if it's connected mm. probably not probably not no. but interesting story nonetheless and i'm glad that he shared this story with us because i would hate to have a rumor be circulating that this guy did something really dumb when he didn't he was actually a victim in this situation. Yeah, just imagine just doing a day-to-day task and all of a sudden getting hit by a vehicle. I mean, let's, like, that could happen to anybody. At Someone any else driving your own vehicle, like, directly into you. That's right. horrifying. Absolutely. And being late on your return for your movie. Even worse. I hope they give him some store credit or something after that whole experience. <laughs> store, <laughs> store credit. <laughs> yeah, three free rentals. Have you guys seen the response to this Joker movie? I have. I'm almost, I'm getting, it's getting to the point where I'm nervous now. Like it's, it's getting such good responses that like, I'm, I'm starting to think like maybe it's, it can't be that good. That's true, man. That's I'm a, a pessimist. Yeah. yeah. Oh, you're a pessimist. Oh, I had no idea. Exactly. Wow, yeah. Well, it's getting such good reviews and something that's happened is Todd Phillips has gone out of his way to mention again that this is a standalone Joker film. Elseworlds keeps getting thrown out. There's not going to be any ties to the next Batman film that we're going to see Robert Pattinson, you know, play Bruce, Bruce Wayne in. However, there is no control that he has over that. And I wanted to talk about that today. It's a studio decision. WB, they're going to do what they want. And right now we're seeing this $50 million budget. You know, you add that extra 40 to 50 million for marketing They're talking about this making its money back on day one. That is nuts. That's crazy for a DC film about the Joker that has no comic book ties, really. Or no Batman. Or no Batman. Like, let that sink in. At least that we know. I haven't read any spoilers. I haven't watched the movie. So what I'm interested in seeing is the response that WB has to the success of this movie because... Although it's not supposed to be tied, it may not be up to Todd Phillips, and we may see some continuation happen regardless of if we want it or not. Look at Suicide Squad. Look at Deadpool 2. Look at the JLA. I mean, this has happened over and over and over again. What do you think about this? I'm excited for the movie, so I, wanna, I don't want to get too far into all that other stuff, but I think it's okay to just have a good movie. I don't think things need to come in threes. Like, it's hard enough. It's an uphill battle, let's just say, to make a really good movie. Sure. So tell me you're going to make three in a row, and you're not going to, like, 
completely, you know, mess it up at the end and then leave me like disappointed with the whole series now. Do one, find another character, find another story, and do a great job. Like that's that's why it's gonna be so good because the acting was good, the story was good. I don't need three movies. I don't need three mediocre ish movies. I need one killer movie. What no, do you think about this? No mediocre Joker. They're already redoing the scenes of Morbius. Like I saw stuff in press saying that they're going to be reshooting some parts of the ending, making me think that they're going to be tying yes. some type of Spider-Man in, you know, like scene into it potentially. I don't know. But anytime you see reshoots, it's raises the red flags or they'll you know, raise the alarms. It's no good. Yeah. Dark Phoenix had a lot of reshoots. Uh, and that didn't really work out very well for it. So far, the worst movie of the year. Sure. Yep. I, I remember that. Movie, you know? I don't want them to ruin a good thing with the Joker movie. And it's very, like you're saying, it's very plausible that they will see great returns and just pump out a trilogy for no reason. When they should probably try the same thing, but with a different character. I don't know. Something else. Explore some other avenue of the DC universe they have. You know, it would be nice to see them try non-Batman stuff or non-Superman stuff. Right. Like... See what you have a whole a whole universe there. You have your whole you have a whole different comic book company's worth of material to draw from. So Yeah. Have faith in your characters, have faith in your story, have faith in your director, put out something good. And then have James Gunn do it and see how it turns out. Sure. That works too. All right. And then we also had Robert Pattinson have his like first interview talking about Batman. I've been waiting for this to happen. This happened like a week ago. But he had a conversation with Variety and by the end of the interview, they mentioned, like, hey, what's going on with Batman? Like, like, how was that like, finding out that you're going to be the next Bruce Wayne? And you know what? I stand by what I said when the rumors were hitting, that I'm excited about this, and I'm only more excited now. Because, for one, I think the main reason why people give Robert Pattinson so much crap is because of Twilight. Right. First thing I want to, like, just enlighten the community on, if that's why you're concerned about this is just google or youtube robert pattinson on twilight he doesn't even like twilight he doesn't even like his own character in that role he thought it was silly he thought it was probably he probably thinks worse of twilight than you think of twilight so let that sink in all right this is a real person who did a role that he didn't even think would be that great of a movie and then it just took off unbeknownst to him so he did what he had to do, and he did the role. And he's done other movies since then that have just gained his, like more and more people's trust in his acting ability. The lighthouse looks really cool, by it the way. It does look really yeah. good, man. So I'm excited about that. But what was his reaction? When, when he got cast, he thought that people would like be super angry at him and like you know blow up, kind of like they did at Ben Affleck or at, like even Heath Ledger when they first announced he was going to be the Joker. Nobody was happy about that. Like, the Brokeback Mountain guy, are you serious? Like, Robert Pattinson was kind of expecting something similar to that didn't really happen no it was like kind of a split he's like i I knew it would be kind of rough but he was also pretty surprised about the support he was getting but then he started talking about the character and how he was going to take it on he thought about how open of a slate it was and how there's just so many different kinds of batmans and how he can maybe add to this role make maybe make something new and i want to see something new that's what i want most but if it's going to be something new I'm okay with that. Like, I, I'm going to have some hope for it because I, I think he can act and do a good job, especially, hopefully, again, always comes down to story. And um, so I have hopes for this. But if it's the same type of Batman we're going to see, I, I'm not excited about it. So we've seen Batman ba- based off of, like, like the Ben Affleck Batman was heavily influenced by Dark Knight Returns. And then Batman Begins was really, really based on Batman Year One. And I really want to see them use some other comic than just like the greatest hits Batman like I don't want to see something like this Joker movie seems to be like a killing joke kind of movie and I would like to see them try something real different like try it like Marvel's not afraid to use more modern storylines to base their their uh, storylines off of for the movies like uh, give us a Court of Owls movie is what right. I really want to see like something different like a Black Mirror maybe Scott Snyder something his build is different. what bugs me I just don't see him as the Batman build that I expect from a Batman so that's why I'm hoping for something different enough to where it'll interpret on screen in some other fashion where it makes sense so I don't know what that He's means got that jawline man. he does though Josh mom man I'm over the jawline you put anybody in a mask with a jaw they gotta they can look like Batman. Well yeah. Christian Bale even said he's excited about it. And when Robert Pattinson was talking about like referencing other Batmans that he likes, it's interesting that all those different people that you mentioned, he didn't mention any of them. 
He mentioned the Tim Burton Batman. That Batman that he used to dress up as when he was a kid. And that's what got me excited. I'm like, okay, this is a fan. This is someone who is going to respect the character, I hope. And I'm excited. I'm in. I'm in. You got me. You got me, Robert. Let's do it. Yep. Me too. I'm just the biggest skeptic on it, man. I, I just see him. I'm just like every Batman person who plays Batman has, I believe, or character said, oh, yeah, I grew up with that character. Or oh, I used to dress up. Oh, I followed that character. Man, I don't know. I don't believe it anymore. I just see a bunch of lines from people just trying to spoof up their appearance. You think it's just PR? I think it's just PR, man. Let us know in the comment section below, Comic Fam. What do you think about Robert Pattinson? What do you think about the Joker movie? Like, are you excited to see this? Are you throwing it out? I, I don't know. I want to see more Elseworld stuff. I like the direction DC is going here, and I'm hoping that they don't just piggyback on one success and just start making movie after movie and tying it all together. But, well, you know, I want to hear from you. Let us know in the comment section below. All right. Let's jump into my favorite part of the show. Viewer comments. Viewer comments. Viewer comments. Ryan, what do we got? I picked four comments from our last podcast last week. First one is from Ryan. Vander Molen. Great job, fellas. After getting back into the hobby recently, I learned quick you need to be proactive and organized. Set up a pull list with your LCS and plan ahead. If your LCS lets you down, I highly recommend to set up a pull list with Russ at Mill Geek Comics. They accommodate out-of-state customers. That's right. Link's in the bio for his Patreon. You pay monthly. You reserve your shelf. You get free shipping, and it'll hook you up and make sure you don't miss any titles. This next comment from uh, Jesse Gutierrez. I kind of just wanted to shout out because he says he's been here for a while. These guys are all gems, meaning, meaning us. Ah, thank you. Thank you, Jesse. The highest class human beings. So much love for this channel. I remember getting on this channel about a year and a half ago, and look what it is today. You guys keep killing it. Thanks for supporting us for this long. Dang. Appreciate you. I feel like we had to give him a shout out for that. That means something. That's a very nice comment. He's an OG. He's been around for a while. Richard Williams. Ah, oh, this one. This one stung. Just met Russ last week at his awesome store, Mill Geek Comics, in all caps. I sure miss Tom Ryan and the GAG. I came from Fort Myers, Florida to Washington. His story was the highlight of my vacation. I've been watching your program for over a year and feel like I know you all. When I met Russ, he treated me like we had been friends for years. You guys are the real deal. Hey. Thanks for visiting the shop over in Mill Creek, Washington. And some, you know, we're there pretty often, at least like once a week. I'm there every Tuesday. Yep. Every Tuesday from like, you know, 11 to 2 or something. You know? Got a bag and board, all those comics. You know, right. I was just asking Russ. I'm like, yo, some comic book stores, they don't even bag and board their comics. I know it's like a big deal. He has to go through every one of the comics for everyone's pull list and the shelf. And I'm like, dude, are you sure you need to do that? Because some shops don't do it. And he's like, no, absolutely. It does make Every a difference. Every single one needs to be bagged and boarded. He just was like, shut it down. No, you have to do it. I'm like, oh, cool. I agree with you, but I just wanted to hear your thoughts. It's a fun process. It's like respect, man. Yeah. I like doing that for him. Jeff Eunice, you're going big time now. This video was on my phone wall for things I may be interested in. I guess it's the Google search function on my phone. Ooh. The internet is onto us. Kind of brings up a good point, though, about uh, like uh, hitting the like button, for Ooh. example, like the working the algorithm. It does. Actually, it helps us out a lot. And if you like, subscribe and comment down below. We do have this Tank Girl trade paperback that you got to read. We also have this uh, poster by uh, it's John Boy doing Wonder Woman. It's signed by him. And we also have another giveaway, but we're going to show that at the end of the show. Ooh. So comment down below. We have three giveaways. And we'll also announce the giveaways from last week. And let's talk about another rumor that I'm actually thinking is way more plausible. Let's get into The Wolverine versus The Hulk. I don't think there's a single person who collects comics that would not love to see this happen. Right? We're seeing rumors of a potential <laughs> movie of oh, Ryan's eye. I forget. Every time I, we talk about Wolverine, I forget like Ryan is the only guy. This who's is just, Wolverine and Hulk too. So it's like. <laughs> it's like double negative. Unless for it's you. a mortal Hulk. Like I'll give him a pass. It's the same Hulk, man. That's true. All right. But it's like, that's a whole nother topic conversation. Yes. But when we're talking about Wolverine versus the Hulk, these rumors are circulating and we got to chat about this because everyone's excited. Everyone's going on YouTube talking about this. We haven't even seen any trace of X-Men in the MCU, but you know what? We're hearing more about this than like anything else. You kind of have to think they're going to put Wolverine in it somehow. Right? Yeah. He's going to get his own franchise. He's going to get at least three movies. How can he not? Right? Like no matter how much one or two people might not want it to happen. He's, it's going to happen. And I think by the time X-Men finally starts to happen in the MCU, it's going to have been an, enough time since, like, what, Logan or whatever the last X-Men movie was. There's going to be enough time, I think, for, for him to come back. This is why it makes sense. 
For one, imagine the solicit. Imagine the trailer. It'll break the internet. Wolverine versus Hulk. Holy smokes. That'll be the biggest thing that happens that year. First things first. Then you have the Hulk. Mark Ruffalo can play the Hulk for decades. It's a CGI character. So it's safe to say that we're going to have Hulk. We're not going to see a team up of Wolverine and Captain America. That's not going to happen. So it's like the next best thing. I don't know when this is going to happen. So I don't want to get people's hopes up like it's happening next year or production or whatever. But... They move fast, man. You never know. Yeah, you just never know. I mean, like you mentioned, I mean, Hulk is... Mark Ruffalo can play him forever. So once they get that right Wolverine and the right Hulk, which is not like Smarty Pants Hulk, but actually like... <laughs> you know, is that going to be his name? Smarty Pants yeah, Hulk? Hulk name. Yeah, Hulk Smash Hulk. You know, that kind of Hulk. Then I would love to see this event happen. I find this intriguing because when the what if rumors first started circulating, and I'm talking about prior to D23, what was the comic book that people were specking on? Because it wasn't what if number one. No, no. It, it's what if 31 when you have what if Wolverine had killed the Hulk. That's right. Started selling out pretty quick, and we started seeing some convention talk as well. People asking a lot of dealers for this book. People starting to pay a little bit more for it. And it's a classic book too. So it's like, you know, hey, if it doesn't happen, it's still a dope book to have. But then with the D23 announcements, you know, we're getting 23 episodes that are going to coincide with the 23 movies. Well, that ain't going to happen. You know, that's, out, that's off the board. We're not getting that in an animated film. And I'm glad because if this movie does happen, this still has a shot. And since these rumors started to come out, we've saw over 20 plus sales of this one comic book in the last 12 days on eBay alone. That's actually pretty amazing. Right? For this book? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a pretty common book. So there's definitely interest by a lot of people to finally get this book and to also just read a fictional story of what that would actually be like. Because you can't get the 181 with the battle. But right. to actually get a fictional story of a conclusion to this epic moment in comics. It would be so cool to see, you know, Wolverine just slicing up Hulk. I want to see this. And you know what? They got my money if they put it up to the screen. Yeah, I'd pay to see that. I would too. Maybe a couple times. You wouldn't pay to see that, Ryan. You I'd watch it for care. free. You'd watch it for free. All I right. wouldn't pirate it, but I would watch it at a friend's house. There you go. There you go. Don't pirate things. <laughs> Let's chat about a huge change that's coming. And a change that's coming because of superheroes. I'm going to credit superheroes for this. Because if we have foreign government officials and we have comedic commentators talking down about the comic book industry and how just it's a useless part of Americana. Well then I'm going to show you how it affects billion dollar industries right now because Netflix is changing. How is it changing? They're dropping the, uh, the binge model that they've adapted for the past few years of kind of dropping an entire season of television all at once on one day and saying, go for it, you know, and watch the whole thing all at once or, you know, have at it. It's like their main selling point. Yeah. Right? Like, do you remember that? It's like, start binge watching. Like, that was what brought people to Netflix. You're going to get the whole series. You got to catch up that week. Don't have to wait every week for episodes. You can just sit down and just blast through it and kill a whole weekend. And, you know, it, it was fun. But, you know, it's impossible to kind of keep on pace with your friends and, like, have discussions about the show because nobody's on it at the same pace. It's also hard to keep up with subscriptions. And we're seeing right now with Disney Plus coming, we already have D the DCU app doing it. They're going to be releasing so much original content, so much that it's got Netflix shaking in their boots. Yeah, they're releasing superhero content, like a lot of superhero content. And the reason that Netflix is thinking about dropping this binge format is that you don't have the consistent retention of your viewership. If you drop it all in one night, you're going to have somebody there for one or two days potentially watching it and then gone till next year. Okay? Or even longer, potentially. Or even longer. So, I mean, you have this weekly consistent program where a person has to tune in and be there. Then that's going to retain the viewership for you. So that's what they're building on. And that makes sense. If you really think about it, that makes sense. When all your other competitors that are paid services are going to provide all this amazing content and it's going to make you stay on their channel because you're there every day yep. for some new show. There's going to be probably new episodes of some particular show every other day, if not every day, with the amount of shows that they're going to be putting out on the Disney app. Think about how big Umbrella Academy would have been if they hadn't just dropped it all at once. 
Yeah, it came and went, man. It came and went. And people talked about it for a long time compared to other Netflix shows. It was on people's... We talked about it for like a month, right? I want to say. Like, it was it was a pretty big deal. But like, if they had 10 episodes, for example, I don't remember how long Umbrella Academy was, but that'd be 10 weeks of, of just sustained discussion. Yeah, like three months. That's and way then better. The added months, you know, people still catching up. Like The hype. The hype would be yeah. real. And Netflix is realizing with... You know, they got to be losing subscribers and they're going to be losing subscribers in a couple months probably by waves. So they're going to be changing this up. And it's because of superheroes. This industry makes a huge impact in culture. Yeah, I mean, like like you said, it's the superheroes that are causing this change because now Netflix has to completely change because they cannot keep up with that model and they're seeing that by losing people. And I imagine people are going to have to start picking which apps they're going to put money into. Yeah, I mean, like, there's got to be a threshold. I mean, I can't pay... For well, I will have to because we have to inform you guys. So sure. I'll have to be paying for all these, but not the average person is going to want to spend a their their normal cable bill. All right, that's and the first then thing that that's goes. gone already. That's the first thing that goes. Yeah, well, and then they, they but they package everything right because you want to get your internet, you get your phone, you get your cable. So they get you in this bundle already, and then you're like, okay, well I'm going to stream um, Netflix, uh, Disney Plus, DC stuff. You're going Amazon. Amazon. You're going to do you know. Apple TV. You should each do one and then share the passwords. And that way, the three of us have, you know, do Netflix, we do Hulu, we do Disney Plus, And that way. You know. Right. But we're all thinking about, it, like, how do you maintain all that? Does it make Impossible. sense? So you got to have a great lineup and you got to keep your, you got to keep the people you have. It's the original content. That is the key part of this. They're saying that The Office is going to be leaving Netflix as well because NBC is going to be starting their own app They're as well. starting their own too. So it, things are really going to change in the next year or two. So now I want to round out the show with more cameo, first appearance stuff. These guys don't even want to talk about it anymore, but I got to. We got to talk about one more thing because I realized, actually I didn't realize this, uh, Key Collector did, posted it on Facebook and my jaw dropped that I missed out on this because I was so focused when the Powers of X, House of X preview came out. They put out all the first appearances of Marvel characters, right? Specifically X-Men characters. And they had Hulk 180 as the first full appearance of Wolverine. What I failed to notice was that among the other characters, there were straight up errors on the page. First off, they say that the Toad first appeared in X-Men number three. That's just wrong. According to the Marvel database and CGC, the first appearance of the Toad is X-Men 4. So this is just a blatant error. Yeah. I mean, there's not much more to say. I mean, it's in black and white. First Toad, number four. I don't know where they got number three. There's not like a tongue sticking out of like the edge of a panel? No, or I like... went through page by page, okay. man. Okay. I know. want to make sure. I'm like, hey, I know this as the blob. Shadow That's of a Toad. Nothing, yeah, I mean, you got, the first, yeah, you got the first blob in number three. And then before that, the Vanisher. Now you have Brotherhood of Evil, number four. And you have the Toad there. So, I mean, it's like it was very... Like, this is the character for this issue. This is the character for this issue. Here's the characters for this next one. That's not the only error on this page, though, because it actually says that the first appearance of Archangel, which, you know, is Angel, appeared in X-Men number three as well. Mm, That's not true. X-Men number one is on the freaking cover. How Um, do you miss that? Yeah, he's he's one of the main X-Men from, like, the first issue. And part of the reason why I wanted to mention Archangel in this is because... I wanted to look this up. I I went on a little run. I'm like, you know what? I want to see, I want to refresh myself on X Factor. I haven't read it in a long time. And I always known first appearance of Archangel to be X Factor 24. And when I sat at the desk here to talk to you guys about this, I said, yo, Jeff, you deal with this book all the time. First appearance of Archangel is? 24. Right? Because as a dealer, you know, this is what we think about, you know, this is on the cover and everything. And if you look up CGC, it says first appearance of Archangel, X Factor 24. You look up the CGC of X Factor 23, doesn't say anything about Archangel. However, his first appearance is X Factor 23. You have Archangel, the whole thing, his metal wings and all. He premieres in that issue as one of the four horsemen. He is the angel of death and it is credited nowhere. So I wanted to bring that up because we had a lot of conversation happen in the community about cameo and first appearances. And this is why this kind of stuff matters because this is just one example of how this gets mixed up. And even as dealers, it gets mixed up because this happens so often in comic books. But then I realized in reading through 
issue 23 and 24, that he doesn't even get named Archangel in these comics. He is the angel of death, right? Because he's part of the, the apocalypse team up. So I'm like, all right, when does this happen? I hit up Key Collector. I'm like, dude, this doesn't even say it in here. Where is it? So we read through. Issue after issue after issue. He's not called Archangel up until a year later. So, yeah, like you said, a year later, he doesn't really get his official name of Archangel until X Factor number 38. Okay. Isn't that interesting? It's really interesting because like, like, if you look on the holder of the CGC holder on number 24, it'll say Archangel. And um, it's almost kind of like a rebrand. I mean, it's still the Archangel. I get it. Yeah, he's got the metal wings. So Yeah, he's got the metal wings, but he goes by a different name. So I'm okay with that. But it's interesting how the name is official over a year later. And that even as dealers, we credit issue 24 because of a cover appearance, not because the first time he's in the story, because he has action shots in X Factor 23. The discussion continues on cameos and... First appearances and full appearances, and it's all a freaking mess. That's right. All right, so I want to remind the community that this conversation isn't over. We're going to actually be talking about some fun stuff in the post show on Spotify, SoundCloud, Stitcher, and iTunes. We'd love to see you over there. We're going to be chatting about some comic books and books that we enjoyed when we were younger because Scholastic is teaming up with Marvel, and they're doing some interesting stuff. And I want to chat Grails. Because this guy's got some extreme grails. I have a grail that I've been after for over a decade that has eluded me. And I know Ryan has some, probably a Green Lantern book that he wants to tell you about. So join us over there. We have another giveaway kind of on that whole uh, cameo conversation. We have Avengers 66. This came out in 1969. This is way before Wolverine. And it's the first mention of adamantium so when we're talking about these like early appearances let's get even like deeper in the trench here and see what the community thinks about that so if you want to win this book or this john boy print or this tank curl graphic novel comment down below let us know what you think about this video let us know what you picked up on wednesday when you hit your lcs and who are our winners from last week's giveaway bloodshot print from john boy is going out to james bond oh thank you for commenting james bond thank you mr bond Spider-Man 17 is going to J-Dag. One of my favorite Thanos appearances. We broke that one down. And then the Golden Age, Daredevil. Oh, man, that's a name. I know. Good luck with that. Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> that's actually what that says. I didn't Jesus realize. Jesus Christ. Hey. Okay. That's... Congratulations, sir. Um, we Thank don't you. pick them. It's random, and we're going to stick with that. That's, that's who it is. Yep. Join us in the after show, and as always, geek responsibly. Geek responsibly. Enough said. <laughs>